Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I am Jeff Langel, and I'm a research and application scientist um, working with the um, the MATSI division, um, and I'm based here in the, the United States. Um, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about what actually um, is in the database and also what some of our um, sort of MATSI focused tools um, can do to uh, help you uh, and your um, colleagues uh, research. So to discuss a little bit about what is actually in the CSD, it's the world's largest database of fully curated organic and metal organic crystal structures. Um, and each of those entries uh, has been curated and enriched by um, expert chemists and crystallographers. Um, that includes um, the addition of bibliographic information, um, chemical information such as uh, bond types, um, and all kinds of other uh, uh, important, helpful um, little bits of, of information added by experts. The, the database uh, contains a, a really rich uh, structural diversity. That diversity of information makes it very, very useful for um, uh, data mining. Um, so we can search for uh, different types of interaction patterns um, and uh, substructures. It also is um, very useful for uh, uh, geometric analysis, um, such as uh, intermolecular and uh, uh, intramolecular interactions. Um, so we can uh, generate statistics about what kinds of um, geometric configurations are usual. So to give a little bit of context about um, the, the CSD, um, it is a database of organic and metal organic structures with over a million entries. Um, and uh, in comparison, there also exists the uh, ICSD, um, which is a database of inorganic crystal structures. Um, that has um, over 200,000 uh, entries. And recently we um, began an initiative to do um, joint deposition. Um, so it's now possible that when um, you have a, a crystal structure, instead of um, submitting it to um, either the, the CSD or the ICSD and then being told to, to go away and, and submit it to um, the other database because it's more appropriate. Um, if you submit it to the CSD, um, we will take care of um, depositing it into the, the correct database for you. Um, you can also access the um, ICSD through our uh, web uh, interface. So you're able to search um, both the CSD and the ICSD um, at the same time. The crystallographic open database also exists. Um, this is a database of organic, inorganic, metal organic, uh, and mineral structures, um, and that has um, over 400,000 entries. Um, the COD is not uh, fully curated, though, um, so you're you're missing out on a lot of the additional um, data that you uh, receive from our, our expert curation. Um, the PDB uh, contains over 120,000 structures, um, and that is a, a database for biological macromolecules. Um, we have lots of uh, interactions with the PDB, um, so you are able to um, uh, search for uh, potential uh, ligand small molecule interactions using some of our tools. Finally, we have the, um, the ICDD, um, and that is a, a powder diffraction database, um, and we have interactions with that um, in that you can, uh, uh, we're building tools for um, searching for um, uh, structures based on um, their, their powder patterns um, using the, the structures from our database. Um, so there's uh, lots of interactions between um, our tools and other databases available in the field. So uh, as I mentioned, the, the data is, is quite diverse. We have um, about 50% of the, the structures are um, organic, um, so they, they don't contain any um, metal or, or sort of non-organic um, elements such as uh, aluminum, gallium, et cetera. Um, and the other half of the database is uh, metal organic. Um, so uh, the, the database is quite evenly split between um, uh, metal organic compounds uh, such as uh, enzyme models, uh, magnetic uh, compounds, uh, metal organic frameworks, and uh, ca uh, small molecule catalysts. Um, and the other half of the database can include um, things as uh, diverse as explosives, protein ligands, agrochemicals, um, pigments, drugs, uh, uh, drug-like molecules, uh, etc. 
as I mentioned, uh, the database is predominantly non-polymeric, although um, we've been seeing a, a rise in the number of polymeric structures over the uh, recent years. Um, and the database is also uh, pretty evenly split between um, single component compounds and multi-component compounds. Um, so when we say multi-components, we are including um, things such as salts, co-crystals, um, and um, uh, solvent uh, containing compounds, um, such as uh, hydrates. Um, that uh, kind of concludes uh, a summary of uh, what we have in, in the database. Um, and I'm now going to um, sort of explore what some of our um, software has to offer. We have uh, the um, CSD Enterprise, um, which is our sort of umbrella term, um, and that includes uh, CSD uh, Core, um, CSD Discovery, and CSD Materials. Um, so I'm going to focus on a little bit of uh, what is included in CSD Core and what is included in CSD Materials. Um, CSD Core includes our um, uh, the database itself, along with um, Conquest and WebCSD, um, which are both tools used to um, search and interact with the database. Um, CSD Materials is our um, software suite, which is designed for uh, helping to analyze and um, uh, characterize uh, molecules that are intended to be uh, drugs. Um, so this is useful for um, molecules which are uh, already crystallized. Um, so uh, CSD Core includes Conquest, um, and this is a desktop application for um, retrieving um, entries from the CSD. Um, it allows for very advanced uh, searching of the database, um, and it provides um, a full range of, of bibliographic um, and uh, metadata um, for each entry. Um, it allows for uh, very complex searching, including um, a searching of 3D parameters. Um, it has a, a wide variety of different uh, search fields. Um, you're able to search uh, based on uh, experimental properties, such as the, the temperature of data collection, um, the pressure, um, the radiation source, source, such as if it's um, a neutron or X-ray, um, and the, the quality of the, the data. Um, it allows for bibliographic searching, such as the, the author, um, the year of publication, or the, the journal um, that the structure was published in. Um, it allows for um, structural searching, so this includes um, a two-dimensional uh, sort of um, diagram search, um, and this can be for um, a full structure or it can be for a, a fragment. Um, and you can also include three-dimensional terms. Um, so if you're looking for non-bonding interactions um, with specific parameters, um, you're able to define those quite easily um, with this interface. Um, you can search based on um, other uh, kind of simpler terms, such as the, the composition. Um, so anything that contains certain elements or um, has a certain formula. Um, crystallographic terms such as the, the size of the unit cell um, or the um, symmetry properties um, and we also allow for generic text searching um, so if you are interested in um, entries which contain um, certain uh, words such as um, natural products or the like um, you're able to uh, quite easily do that um, with the interface as well. We also allow for um, searching um, through uh, the web um, so you can use our uh, web CSD, or, um, also known as access structures, um, to search. Um, this has a, a more limited set of um, search features, um, but uh, you can um, do this directly in the browser, including um, on your uh, smartphone. Um, this uh, returns very up-to-date information, um, whereas uh, Conquest, um, uh, is updated several times throughout the year. Um, WebCSD is updated on a sort of rolling basis. Um, so in order to see the, the most um, up-to-date recent structures, um, you can uh, access those directly through here. Once you've found your, your structure of interest through here, you can also export the, um, the, um, uh, the SIF from here as well. So now I'm going to uh, discuss um, some of the software available through um, the CSD materials um, suite. 
Um, and this is a, a toolkit designed for um, aiding in um, solid form um, informatics, uh, primarily for uh, solid form risk assessment, um, which is uh, essentially um, determining um, the likelihood of the existence of um, other polymorphs of your uh, material of interest. Um, although there's a, a wide variety of applications that um, you can use these these tools for. The uh, suite includes, um, uh, so just to sort of give a, a rundown of what some of the the options in the, the software are, um, we have a, a crystal packing similarity um, tool, which allows you to uh, uh, quantify the similarity between um, uh, two or more crystal structures. Um, uh, which can be very helpful for um, trying to um, find uh, structures which are similar to yours. Um, there is a, a motif, uh, mo uh, sorry, a motif search um, and a packing feature search. Um, so this allows you to define um, three-dimensional arrangements of um, atoms or molecules um, and then search for that particular three-dimensional arrangement. Um, so we see here that um, this stacking of rings with uh, chlorine atoms has been defined and um, uh, you can search for other structures which contain this particular um, stacked set of uh, fragments. We have a, a conformer generator. Um, this, so this uses um, uh, statistics from the CSD in order to generate um, realistic looking molecules. Um, this is uh, very useful if you only have a, a two-dimensional structure and you would like to see what a likely three-dimensional arrangement might be. Um, we have full interaction maps. Um, so this uses um, statistics from the database in order to see where the most likely sites of um, donor and acceptor atoms in your structure are. Uh, we have hydrogen bond propensity. Um, so this is one of our um, uh, sort of most impactful tools in uh, terms of um, uh, drug solid form risk assessment. Um, this is, uh, is used to uh, identify more uh, p potential more stable polymorphs of uh, molecules. And I'll discuss that in a little bit more depth here in a moment. Um, we have tools for analyzing um, hydrated molecules, um, so looking to see if um, the hydrogen bonding patterns of, of molecules um, are, uh, or sorry, of uh, hydrates are, are usual or not, um, and also to see what sorts of volumes um, uh, hydrates are taking up in a, a unit cell. We have tools for um, uh, doing molecular complementarity, so determining if a particular molecule is likely to co-crystallize with um, a, a different molecule um, based on uh, some descriptors that we've developed. Um, and we also have tools for um, looking at um, the theoretical um, morphology, so the actual, um, what the, the shape of the actual crystal that a, uh, a molecule might form uh, would look like. Um, so to, to give kind of a, an example um, based on um, sort of a, a real world uh, use case, um, we have a, uh, a pharmaceutical um, health check, um, as we call it. Uh, in this uh, sort of workflow, um, we, we take um, uh, drug candidates and we use our, our variety of tools in order to say how likely those um, um, candidates are to form stable polymorphs. Um, in this uh, example, with, available on our, our website, um, we have uh, a, a really good summary of um, what was shown in this paper, but um, essentially three pharmaceutical compounds were assessed for their, their stability using our tools. And the reason why that is important is because different um, polymorphs can have different solubilities and stabilities. Um, so if um, a molecule undergoes a, a phase transition into a different polymorph, um, your drug um, tablets can potentially uh, collapse um, or uh, be less bioavailable um, than you might expect. Um, Follow-up experimental work was, was done uh, based on our uh, recommendations um, in order to uh, confirm the, the findings as well, um, which you can read about um, in more depth in the paper. Um, but to, to briefly summarize um, some of the findings from, from this, 
um, we have this uh, Maravorac um, compound, which is a HIV viral entry inhibitor. Um, and uh, in this case, the, the first crystallized uh, form um, exhibited this um, sort of three-centered hydrogen bond, um, which uh, was kind of deemed unusual. Um, we searched our database for similar um, sorts of fragments, um, and we found that um, the uh, donor acceptor distance for this was actually um, very unusual um, when compared uh, against a histogram of, of similar um, uh, hydrogen bonds. Um, so that was a, a clue to, to go back and look for um, potential other uh, polymorphs. And uh, experimental screening found a, uh, another polymorph, um, which uh, actually um, did not exhibit um, this um, three-centered hydrogen bond. Um, and was more uh, was deemed more stable. Um, so in this case, a more stable um, uh, drug polymorph was found um, based on uh, analysis of the the CSD. Um, another example from that paper was this uh, crisodinib, um, and this is a, a lymphoma kinase uh, treatment. Um, in this case, uh, there were no alternative forms identified through uh, extensive screening, um, and hydrogen bond propensity um, calculations were performed. Um, in the case of hydrogen bond propensity, um, we generate a large number of potential hydrogen bonding networks, um, and then we score each of them based on um, what is known as the, the coordination uh, score and the, the propensity score um, for the, the donors, acceptors, and, and hydrogen bonds. And in the, the case shown, essentially, uh, uh, without going into um, too much technical detail, um, compounds which are found in the bottom right of this chart um, score very well in terms of both propensity and coordination. And in this case, the observed form was found um, as the, the bottom rightmost compound. Um, so this suggests that this compound is in its most stable um, form. Um, and that agreed very well with um, what was seen experimentally in terms of um, solvent uh, screenings for, for alternative polymorphs. Um, and so that's just um, two examples of, of how our tools uh, can be used to um, help um, research, in this case, um, pharmaceutical research, although uh, it can be used in a, a wide variety of uh, uh, different fields uh, of uh, solid form um, uh, crystallography and chemistry. Mm -hmm.